and destruction and, and all the terrible things. You know, it's a spectrum. The human condition is in polarity. That's how we sort of, it's in our language, and it's, it's in our emotions, and that's how we uh, decipher the, the world before us. So uh, you need the, the tertiaries, the darker colors, to appreciate, you know, the more primary, the higher chroma key colors. So all the colors, that's my answer. All right, next question. Do you have any advice or tips for emerging artists? You want to stay emerging. But what I mean by that is you can fight to get to that next level of being a mid-career or established artist, but the whole process of emerging is where you're going to have the, have the hustle and growth. It's a very exciting time. You're defining what your voice is as an artist, what your, um, dare I say, what your brand is. It's a very, very special time. So uh, first off, I want to just commend you on your effort of doing that. Uh, it, it has to come from a real position of, of love. You know, you have to have self-love to believe in yourself as an artist. So, so awesome. You're already off to a good start. What I would say is because of the unbridled opportunity of the internet and social media, you should take advantage of that. I have, and I found great success. So that piece of advice is coming from a position of, of experience. And so I'm saying to you, get on every social media platform, figure out the top three that work for you and smash them as hard as you can. For me, it's Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. Use those platforms and update, update your website. Just create, create, create content, improve the quality of your documentation. Um, even if you don't, if you have an issue with sharing, because social media is all about sharing, just document everything, archive everything, take pictures, take videos, incessantly talk to everybody that you know about where you want to go and what you're doing and what you're doing next. Because you'll be surprised who's already in your network, who you already know that uh, is going to help you go to the next step. You might not even know them, but they're watching you, they're listening, or they're ready to help you. Because that, that honesty, that authenticity, if you can be authentic, people are going to empathize with you. If they're empathizing with you, you move into a whole other level of, you know, then it's a collaboration. You're working with them to achieve also their goals. That's what you want to do as an emerging artist. You, you want to you know, break that barrier of just communication, be authentic with people, and they'll help you go to wherever you want to go. Um, and document everything, create lots, create a positive space for yourself, surround yourself with positive people. There's a lot of negativity out there, and you don't need it. Say goodbye to any of that. Anyone that is bringing you down, it could be a friend, it could be a family member, be where you work. I don't know. Just move on, move, get into a better space, and surround yourself with positive people. Life is too short uh, to deal with that. How long have you been an artist? I am now 29, so I would argue that I've been an artist for, I'd like to say 29 years, uh, but I don't know if I was an artist while I was just born or whatever. Uh, it's fake art since 95, that's when I was five years old, so maybe since I was five. If I could change that question a little bit, so it's like, I've been an artist my whole life, but I've been a career artist, like a, a successful artist, for about like the last two and a half, three years, and I've had like a 10 year career uh, so far. What's my definition of success in that situation? I would say that like my independence, my liberty, and my happiness, those things are more like more precious than anything. Forging my own path has brought me a tremendous amount of happiness, and I think that that has been a huge, a huge step in, in my career. So people often ask, how long does it take for the paint to dry? Well, the paint usually takes about 24 to 48 hours to dry. It all depends on the climate and the air circulation. If it is dry, if you have fans blowing air, uh, then you can speed up that dry time um, and you can get it down to as, as low as 6 to 12 hours. Uh, but it all changes about the, you know, the amount of paint you use. I paint all at once in one go, then that needs to dry, then I resin after that, and the resin also takes another 48 hours. So all in all, all drying in, I would say, two, three, maybe even four days for the paint to dry. Uh, but I would also like to add on to that that when it comes to me, and the paint is never dry. So if, the, if, if all the paint is dry, you know, then something is wrong. There should be wet paint somewhere. So just, uh, you know, if you come to an art show, just uh, don't wear your nicest clothes because they might get a little bit painty. How long does it take you to finish a painting? The duration of a painting would take anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes on the low end, like an hour and a half, like two hours on, on the max. Uh, but that does not include all of the setup. Usually I set up all day and I'm working like 12 hour days and then the execution happens in that sort of like 15 to half an hour or like an hour, hour and a half range. Um, that's how long it takes me to, to, to you know, perform a painting. I think they're all performances. I think life is a painting and it took a lifetime to make that artwork, you know? Like it might take me three minutes to complete a painting, but in order to, to reduce it to that short time, you know, it took a lifetime of, of trial and error and becoming the person that I am and going through the experiences that I've had to perform it in, in, in mere minutes. So, Do you sell your work? Where can I buy it? Good question. Do I sell my work? Yes, I sell my work. I sell my work directly. You can uh, find all of my artworks available on my website. That's Kalenshaub, C-A-L-L-E-N-S-C-H-A-U-B.com. That's my website. There's all my work. Just go to Original Artworks. You can find everything from the 10 years of work. Uh, whatever is available is there. There's no shop. The shop is shut down at the moment. We're going to be relaunching it 2020. But right now, you can still get originals and they're on my website. Do you sell your pants? Uh, so these pants, uh, I don't actually currently sell them. Uh, I will in the future. So a lot of people are asking, am I going to come to your country to perform? I was planning a 2020 world tour. I was not ready to do 2020 tour. I apologize. I did say I was doing a 2020 tour and that's not happening. I'm going to postpone that. You know, maybe 2025 or something. I really want to come to a city near you or whatever and, and, and perform, um, you know, just so you can see the process with your own eyes in person, IRL. Uh, it's just really not in the cards at the moment, but it is a, a life goal that I have to um, tour the world with my art, with the arena, go to different communities and share the colors in, in person. My, my, my mission is to make the world a more colorful place and to inspire people. And so I feel I can do that best by traveling the world and showing my art. Do you listen to music when you paint? The answer to that is no. My painting is a spiritual practice for me. Uh, I do not listen to music. I, I work in silence. It's sort of a meditative thing. It's about inner stillness and presence, and uh, it really uh, helps me get there. And I feel it. Uh, I'm trying to almost capture that energy in the, in the abstract work, and then people can then feel that when upon viewing it. It's really about a mind state, and the mind state informs the physical state of the colors in the paint. Um, service. No, I do not listen to music. Do I like music? Yes. I also feel that music, you know, it's other artists and I'm trying to give a pure, like a pure channel of like what is out there in the universe, you know, like what my expression is, like through me in taking a musician's work, it's going to influence the outcome of my work. So by working in silence, I think it's a more of a pure version of, of what I can do. That's my thinking around music and creating. Do you ship internationally? Yes, we ship internationally anywhere in the world. We can get it to you. How old are you? I am 29. My birthday is November 30th. I was born in 1990. What is your favorite painting you made? I have a new favorite actually. I'm really proud of the painting called Effusion. Huge painting. It's 10 feet tall, 7 feet across, a monster canvas, and it's, it's made 
with the Chalice of Chaos. So that's a bucket with eight holes in it. That idea was, was something that Sparkles really uh, worked with me to, to produce. And so it was like there was, a, there was a collaborative element to it. There was the fact that it was the culmination of a month of going live, painting every day. It's one of the largest paintings I ever made. It went viral on the internet. It just represented a lot of a lot of important things to me. That's just it's just an epic piece. It's just an epic piece. How do you find inspiration when you're not inspired? I, I love that question because it's very real. I work a lot. Do I get uninspired? Yes, I do. The way that I deal with that is I just go to work anyways. I paint anyways. If I'm uninspired, if I'm depressed, if I'm not feeling it that day, if I'm my health is down, if things in my life aren't going well, do I still need to make art? Yes. Is my best work created out of those situations when I'm not my best? No. But that's how important it is for me. It's more important to me the act of doing it than it even being good or not. Inspiration, and this is not my quote, I'm, I'm quoting somebody else, it's sort of like this grace, you know, it graces you if you create the conditions for inspiration to sort of frolic and to, and to thrive. So if you go to the studio and you're working, inspiration might hit. But it might not, but you're there. Rather than the other way around, waiting for inspiration to hit and then go to the studio. Well, that might not ever happen. I've worked for years being uninspired. That's not something I want to tell you, but that's that's the honesty, that's the realness. We all go through it. We were never always at our best, and we just have to work through it. That's how I deal with it. I just I still just show up. I make it work, even when I'm not feeling it. People are always asking what's next. Right now, my focus is on going live, going live every day, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, going live every day for this month, possibly into the future. It's sort of a live revolution in a way. Lots of people are going live these days, uh, given the current state of the world. So it's kind of interesting to see. Do you sell prints? Currently, I do not sell prints. I'm going to be relaunching my online store in 2020. At the moment, there's no prints. There's only originals. Where do I get my canvases? Uh, I have my canvases made custom uh, here in Montreal by Faux Cadrez Canal. They do museum grade uh, specific to each project that I would need. Panel, canvas stretch over it. They're made to very high standard by my friend Zeke and uh, so shout out to him I'll leave his description in the final cut of this video I also shop at Desire's uh, and sometimes I pick up canvases and supplies there as well how do you title your work the titles of a work can really inform the interpretation of it you can really steer people in a direction with what you intended a painting to what I do is after creating a work I then let it dry I document it I edit the video then once that that's all on the computer I watch the video and I look at the, the image then I'll put it into an Excel document with my team we will sort of go through different iterations of different titles the main person on my team is actually my mom that's Janine Shaw and uh, she uh, is a teacher and a librarian and so she helps me with a lot of my titling and so we have an ongoing conversation we get on the phone every day to talk about what I was thinking about the meaning of the work what I want people to feel and stuff and there's an ongoing dialogue usually some of the rules that I have with the titles is I don't want it to be too uh, descriptive I want it to be open-ended because I want people to be able to interpret and feel the work in their own unique way if it's too descriptive I think you kind of take that away from people and I wanted to provide some insight add something of a direction that wasn't there already in the piece so a little additional suggestion a little tipping of the hat in another sort of to, to shed light on, on a bigger concept that the work could allude to who does your hair actually so you my hair Usually it's done by Martha, hair by Miss Monoxide, which is by Miss Monoxide on Instagram. It's actually her birthday right now. Happy birthday, Martha. And she's come to Miami, to Art Basel. She works from Toronto, house calls to Montreal. She's really amazing, best friends with Sparkles. She has been doing my hair for over, like, I feel like it's been like a year and a half, but she wasn't able to last time. So her friend, Sam, uh, I'll put his link well in the description. He did this, this version of it. So th thank you. And they work at Parlor, the Shadow Parlor in Toronto. Do you teach classes? I used to teach classes. I currently do not teach any classes. I am thinking about providing online classes for people to take as a sort of a future project for me. Originally, before I became a full time artist, I thought I was going to be a teacher. I was going to teach art. Uh, so I do have a passion for teaching. I think it's really important. It got pushed to the side as I've been very focused on my career as a you know, solo artist. So where can I see your work in person? Currently, the only spot you can see it in Canada, uh, the Art Gallery of Ontario. They have some work of mine through their rental and sales. They periodically will display the work in the gift shop and in the hallways and stuff like that. So you can you can uh, see my work there. There's actually a really nice piece. It's called Hacity. You can see it from the street, actually. It's at the AGO. Uh, it's in the gift shop. And uh, if you go in, free admission to the gift shop at least. Other than that, my work is mostly just online. If you want to sign up for like my newsletter on my website, then you can get notifications about you know future live performances, exhibitions where you can see my work in person. I do often make it down to Art Basel in Miami on a yearly basis. I've been going for the last three years, so you can see my work there. The question is, can I come to your studio? The answer is no. Unfortunately, you cannot. It's not a gallery. There's no public hours, private. I work alone. A studio visit, that's one thing if that's scheduled, but there's no time where you can uh, just come by to visit. So do you ever paint with a brush? Got rid of the brush. I use different innovative tools and I'm always exploring. There's nothing I would really want to illustrate with a brush, you know, like I don't want to have that control. I know how to paint with a brush. I've taken lots of life uh, you know, painting courses and uh, oil, acrylic, watercolor, and that sort of thing, but I, I don't know interest in pursuing that. I may at some point explore that again. Currently, I put down the brush and I'm focused on uh, just like the release of control and, and I've got no interest in using the brush now. <laughs> Who is your favorite artist? I'm gonna try to answer this without sounding like an egomaniac. <laughs> Bear with me here. I am my own favorite artist. <laughs> it seems kind of a pompous thing to say, but uh, you have to really believe in yourself and you have to support yourself and continue to push yourself and inspire yourself. It takes a lot. If I idolize somebody more than myself, then then I would only ever ever be in their shadow. Let's just break this down for a second. Myself, like what is the self, okay? Like there's this construction of like Callan Shaw that I put out there online and, and a persona, and that is not the essence of who I am. The essence of who I am is behind all that. Behind the curtain, it's the presence which inhabits this screen, this like human form. Behind that, there's like there's a light. This thing that I've manufactured, this concept of Callan Shaw, the artist, that's who I try to aspire to be the role model, even for myself. Like if I want to be a role model for younger generations of artists, I have to aspire to something greater than myself. So the idea of the self is something more than just I'm not just like patting myself on the back right now saying, oh yeah, I'm I, I'm happy with myself. No, I'm saying there's there's an idea like the like beyond like this form, like there's the idealized version of myself, which I aspire to that, the hero archetype. Like I want to be that, that inspiration, that light for people. So I have to be that for myself. That's why I put that energy there. It's a little bit convoluted. I sound like an egomaniac, but 
there you have it. Thank you for watching my FAQ. I truly hope that it was helpful. If there's further questions that you have, please just send me a direct message on Instagram. I want to encourage you to go to calendshot.com, get on my mailing list, and that way you can hear about any future events, live performances, any other cool happenings that might be going on. Thank, Thank you so much, much and peace out.